Okay, welcome back. I'm continuing right where I left off. As you can see, our timer is still going. Uh, let's clean up our code a little bit and then clean up our output a little bit. So I'm gonna control C to get rid of that. Uh, control L to clear the screen. And then again, I'm using Venom as my text editor, but use whatever editor you like. Uh, and uh, something I've been trying to do more with my bash scripts and, and lots of times the bash scripts, you don't do this, but you know, I've been working with a lot of other languages and I really like you know, cleaning things up into functions, especially a short little script like this, it isn't really necessary. Um, but let's go ahead and create some functions that helps prevent any, um, you know, repeating of code. Uh, and what I'm going to do is up here, I'm going to go like this. I'm going to say function main. This will be my main function. And uh, you don't have to write function like this. You can just write main in the parentheses here. Um, but I like to write function. I just think it looks a little cleaner. I meant to indent there. Okay, and now we're gonna call that there, but we that, that creates the function we wanna call it somewhere. So at the bottom of our script, we're just gonna say main. So uh, it will load everything and then um, start in our main function here. So we'll have our little message here and then our while loop I'll put in here, I'll say function start timer and put all this in a function, indent everything properly. Now up here, we will say, uh, start timer, the function, and then we will exit zero, meaning that we exited properly if uh, we ever get there, which we never really will because we're in a loop. Um, but it's good to have it there. Okay, so now if everything is correct, we should still be able to run this and really there's no difference to how uh, it outputs. It's just we're cleaning things up a little bit because we're gonna add another function right now. Uh, so let's go ahead and think about this. So right now we're counting seconds. Uh, so after a minute, it's gonna keep counting seconds. And after hours, it's still gonna be seconds. It'd be nice if we could format things uh, so that they display nicely uh, with um, seconds, a second column, a minute column, an hour column, and even a day column. Uh, so let's go ahead and look at that. I am going to Instead of typing it all out, I'm going to paste a function in here uh, that I have. Um, and 99% of this is just from sample code that I've used and found online a while ago. Um, I would give credit, but I don't think there really was any credit where I found it. It's very basic, but I'm going to walk you through it here. So we have, I'm calling this format time, and then you would pass it a variable, basically your seconds. Uh, and that would be anytime you pass a variable to a script, the first variable or argument is going to be dollar sign one. Well, the same is when you create functions in your script. So we're going to, when we call this, we're going to call time format and then give it a number of seconds, which would be uh, these seconds right here. And what this is going to do is going to take that and then putting in a variable called num. We could call it seconds, but uh, we actually have that somewhere else. So it's just to keep it even uh, from being confusing, we're going to call it num. And then we're gonna set our minutes, hours, and days to zero so that they start off at that. And then we have a series of if-then statements with some math here. So we're gonna take that number and we're gonna check, is it greater than 59? If it is, well then we're going to take that number and we're going to give it this percent 60. And what that's saying is it's gonna take that number, so our seconds, divide it by 60 and give us the remainder and that's gonna be our seconds column. Then we're going to take the what's left over, we're gonna, well, we're gonna take that number and divide it by 60, and that's gonna give us, we're gonna replace our num with that. And then we're gonna take that, and again, see if it's 60 or more, or sorry, yeah, well, yeah, greater than 59 or 60 or more. You could say, uh, you know, equal or greater than 60, or just say greater than 59, same, accomplishes the same thing. Uh, and again, now we're going to divide it by 60 and get the remainder and put that in our minutes column. And then we're going to take our number, uh, which we reassigned here, and divide that by 60 and put it in the num. So basically, we're chopping it up uh, by 60 and then the let's left over by 60. And then next time we're going to do it by 24 because uh, there's 24 hours in a day. Uh, so then, uh, we have some else statements 
you know, in case those things don't get their values, we're going to give them the numbers here all the way down for hours, minutes, and seconds. And then I'm going to output, just like we did before, I'm going to say echo uh, dash E and the N means don't print a new line at the end of this. And the E is saying, hey, look at this special backslash R here, which means to go back to the beginning of the line. Uh, so it's going to overwrite the line. And then instead of just outputting the seconds, it's going to output our days value, hours value, minutes value, and our seconds, which by default, uh, all these except for seconds, because we're going to start with some set with zero seconds after doing our math here, uh, we're going to have zeros. But then once we break that 59 second, all of a sudden minutes will start being updated. And once the minutes pass that 59 uh, minute barrier, then the hours will. Uh, so we do that. And again, that's in a function called function time, or sorry, format time. So really, we don't need this because our function is going to output that. I could return it, would be a more proper way probably to do it. Uh, what I'm going to do here is just paste in that, and we're going to give it the seconds. And that should be it. That's going to clean up our output. Um, so there we go. Uh, it could would be nice if we put some placeholder zeros in there. I think that would be nice. So that would be zero 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 zero, and then like zero one zero two zero three here, and then once the first. But uh, we could do that. I'm not going to do that in this video though, because this is good enough. Um, so yeah, so we've cleaned up our output a bit, and it's not just displaying seconds. You're going to get real time. I'll let this video run uh, for another 30 seconds at least, so you can see when it flips over. But again, uh, I hope that made sense. The math in there basically we're checking whether the seconds are greater than 59, and dividing that number of seconds by 60, and getting the remainder. And that will then be our seconds from there on out. And then taking our number and dividing it by 60 and replacing the number with that. And then checking are the minutes over 59, which is the num now, and so forth and so on. So here in a second, we should get one zero. Oh, why did it go to nine? Oh, that was just, okay, let's do that. Let's, let's see if it does that again. And that's that, that, so, okay, yeah, it's going to do that again. I didn't realize that. So because of the way that we're clearing the line, it's not really erasing the line. What it's doing is it's going back to the beginning of the line and rewriting it. And so the, um, the when we update, now the, that, co that row is not going to be as long, so that last number of nine is going to be there until I hit a key or the number grows. So we really should put placeholder zeros. So let's go ahead and do that. I was just about to uh, actually look up how to add the placeholder zeros, which I'm still going to do here. Uh, but I just realized uh, a quick way to actually clear the line in a way by putting spaces there. Uh, you can actually do backslash B a number of times. Uh, is backspacing. But another option would be to, if I put another R here and put a bunch of spaces that are longer than my output, what it's going to do is it's going to go to the beginning of the line, print a bunch of blank spaces, and then go to the beginning of the line and print uh, my output here. So if I do, if I run the script, it looks the same at this point. And actually, just to make things uh, a little bit clearer, I probably would put these on two separate lines. It's going to accomplish the same thing. I just think it will look nicer. Plus gives you the added benefit of making sure you put enough spaces to that it's longer than your output there, which uh, it definitely will be because uh, these take up, uh, these variables are taking up more characters than the seconds will, or the total time will. The only thing that's gonna get more than uh, two digits would be days, and it would take days and days <laughs> it, would take, it would take months to for it to accomplish that. Um, uh, but right now, I should be able to run this script. And again, this is one of those things, it's a program you do, and off the bat, it doesn't really seem to make a difference. The end user isn't really going to notice it. But I'm going to let it again run here, and you'll see that as it gets to the, uh, the 59 mark, and then it flips over to the next minute, what it's going to do is it's going to... Um, actually every time what it's doing it's going to the beginning of the line printing a clear line going to the beginning of the line and printing your new output um, I don't know if it's the most efficient way to do it uh, but you'll see that that 9 that was at the end of the line before uh, should not be there because we're actually overriding it with blank spaces so there actually will be a blank space there which there is actually every time we're running this loop here you just don't see it because it happens so quick um, 
uh, but we're almost there. So as it flips over from 59 back to zero, there you go. We didn't, that nine didn't get stuck there. Uh, but let's go ahead and add in those placeholder zeros, which uh, you're gonna have to give me a moment to, to look up. Uh, I know it, I might have to use printf is how I'm familiar doing it. And then you do something like percent the D and the number of characters you want. Give me a moment. Okay, so I figured things out. <laughs> and actually, uh, we're gonna rewrite a lot of our script here because, well, let's get to point number one. Uh, let's add some, some placeholder zeros here. Uh, so we'll go back into our script here. I also wanna mention, uh, you notice uh, earlier I said um, there's multiple ways to do math in Bash, and I use the let, uh, which seems to be less used than using these uh, uh, double um, uh, parentheses. And it's just that's the way I learned uh, to create integers 12 years ago when I first started writing Bash scripts. So that's how I use it. And you'll notice down here, I am uh, checking things and then doing math inside these parentheses. And uh, that's because I did not write this script, but, uh, this function, I mean. Um, but let's let's just get to our placeholder zeros here, which again, uh, I don't know how to do it with Echo. I've done it with printf before, so I checked. And what we would do is, let's go ahead and move our line uh, eraser up here. So we're gonna go uh, backslash, whoops. Uh, backslash R. So I'm still going to use echo. I could probably, I, I know I can do all this in one printf uh, command, uh, but off the top of my head, uh, I don't know how to do that. But we're going to say go to begin a line, write a line of blank spaces, and then go to the beginning of the line again. Then we're going to come down here, and if we do printf, and so sorry to look at this, and one option would be the way I started off was percent. 2, or sorry, 0 to D, and then close those quotations. And then if I put spaces between each one of these and remove that last quotation mark, what we'll get, you'll see, is not quite what we want, but I'm going to run it. And it's close. We have our placeholder zero, but it's saying timer, timer, colon. So I'm like, oh, okay, so it's going to print everything multiple times. Let's go ahead and just for now remove the timer and put in the semicolon there, and that works. Uh, but we have this last little semicolon there, and I don't like the way that looks. Um, so then the next thing I tried is I put back in our timer colon, and then here I put, because we have days, hours, minutes, seconds, so four, we have one, two, three, Four, erase that and we should get the output that we wanted and there you go but there's a better way let's turn our format function into a one-liner how about that uh, so let's go back into our timer here and what we're going to do is we're going to erase this entire function except for those two lines that we just had for our output and um, I'm killing people who use Vim like me that I just held down D rather than typing in the line numbers that I wanted. Anyway, I just know someone's going to complain about that. Let's go ahead and pull those lines and paste them in here, indent everything. Uh, we'll get rid of our format time call there. And what I'm going to do is in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, instead of doing hours, days, blah, blah, blah. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say in quotations, dollar sign and double parentheses here. And in there, I'm gonna take our seconds and divide it by uh, 86400, zero, zero, which is the number of seconds in a day. And then again, in other quotations, double parentheses with a dollar sign, and I'm going to see, say uh, dollar sign, or just seconds, divided by 36.00% uh, 24, and some of you are probably seeing what I'm doing here, and I should be able to do, again, double parentheses here, 
and the line's getting kind of long, so it wouldn't hurt to break this down a little bit uh, into multiple lines. Uh, but let's go again, seconds divide by 60, percent 60. And basically we're doing all our math on one line here. Uh, so what we're gonna do is uh, seconds and percent 60. So here, this is the number of seconds in a day. So we're taking the seconds and dividing it by that. And that's going to be our day output. Then we're going to take our seconds, divide it by 36 and then 24 to get our hours. Because that's the number of seconds in an hour and that's how many hours we have. Uh, and then we're going to take our seconds, divide it by 60, and then divide it by 60 with the remainders. And then we're going to get our, our seconds and divide it by that. And if I typed everything properly, that one line now, not only gives us our placeholder zeros, but should properly output our timer here. Uh, I'm gonna let it run here for a little bit. So uh, yeah, so I saw that uh, when I went to look for placeholder zeros, I saw an example of time output that was very similar to that. So that's what I ended up putting there. And uh, yeah, that's a lot better than that big long function if you can shorten up your code. And uh, that's it. So uh, hopefully I'll remember this will be up on my uh, Pastebin account. If you go to filmsbychris.com, uh, up at the top, uh, you'll see a button that says scripts. Uh, and then you'll click that and it'll bring you down to a script section. Uh, click on the one that says my notes. And my notes will bring you to a searchable page. And you can actually search for the script on there. Um, you know, just type in some of the keywords from the script. Uh, like type in seconds or whatever, and it should bring you, uh, give you a list that will bring you to the paste bin of this code. Uh, again, you can search through a lot of my example codes. There's probably almost 700 different scripts uh, in that list. Uh, so that's it. Go ahead, check that out. Again, I'll try to remember to put a link to the, uh, the code in the description of the video, but uh, if I forget for some reason, go to filmsbychris.com, that's Chris the K, link in the description, uh, and go to my notes and search there for this code. It's going to be called uh, Basic Bash Timer or something like that. And check it out there. I do thank you for watching. As always, I hope that you have a great day.